First time I met Bill, I was... When I met Bill, uh... In rehab, actually. He had like a huge coffee in his hand, a cigarette, and I thought I smoked a lot of cigarettes. I was smoking like two packs a day at the rehab, and this guy was smoking back to back to back cigarettes. The first time I met Bill, he kind of looked like a businessman. In comes Bill, large iced coffee and all, and uh... He um, just sat down with me. I remember him saying, you know, how you doing, young man? And I pretty much was like, I'm doing really good. And he's like, oh, okay. No, but little did I know, it was more than just what met the eye with it, you know? But he knew I wasn't, and then I, I, I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing good, man. He's like, I know, what's going on? And, and we talked, and... You could tell he cared, from, you know? Just from like a look in the eye, like, you know? Not a lot of people, not a lot of people actually care. I'm Jude Measle. Tyler Bradford. 24, gonna be 25 in November. Born and raised in a small town in New Hampshire. From Staten Island, New York. My name's Tedeoni Castro. I'm 30 years old. I'm originally from Franklin Square, New York. Just moved down here a little over, about a year and a half ago, to West Palm Beach. And I've been in West Palm Beach now for almost a year. And uh, I'm a drug addict. My name is Bill Nemi. I live in West Palm Beach, Florida. I Spent most of my life in Massachusetts. I came down here um, seven years ago after Thanksgiving 2011. My mother had lived down here since 1989 and unexpectedly became terminally ill. I didn't know anybody here. I have a ton of friends in Massachusetts. Um, I am recovery. I got sober up there over 21 and a half years ago. Um, so my plan was to go back to where my life was. Um, but really God had a different plan. I, my mother did considerably better than our prognosis. I was able to go to work. Um, my brother Mike and I lived with her because she ended up being on oxygen around the clock eventually and somebody had to be there, but we were able to work out a schedule and I started working in treatment at a great treatment facility down here working with alcoholics and addicts really the best job I've ever had. I, I've owned restaurants, a catering company, but this was completely different. And then my mother passed away in early 2015. And after that point, um, one of my sponsees asked if we could open a men's halfway house. And, you know, we did a lot of research. We went toward 18 different facilities, got some guidance, and at that time, uh, we felt we could do it. You know, it was a lot of work involved, and one of the things that I wanted, I wanted the name to be Came to Believe because it's a an AA book full of true stories that was very inspiring to me when life was very dark. And surprisingly, the name was available. So we opened in April of 2015. Um, I get to do exactly what I want to do. I believe 100% that it's career-wise what God wants me to do. And we've been extremely successful. And the vast majority of the credit goes to the men who have come to came to believe. They have all become incredibly important to me. They're not just my residents, but they are the guys that like family. So, you know, one of the things they teach us in recovery is do the next right thing and good things will happen, and that's been my experience for a long time. And it's really been amazing. The guys get, as I said, the guys get most of the credit. You know, the guys that are there the longest, they take the new guys in, they make them feel welcome, and then those guys eventually are the guys that have been there a while, and they welcome the new guys in, and make them feel welcome. So, Why do you do this? Why do you do what you do? I do this because there is not a single thing I would rather do in my life. And, and this, I hope, does not sound egotistical because it's not meant to be. I believe it's what God wants me to do. It's exactly what I want to do. And I'm good at it. And I didn't know anything about recovery, so the reason that I'm good at it is because all the incredible people that have helped me over the years, 
my colleagues, um, and above all else, God. When I see somebody that needs help, I just want somebody to help them. If it's me, great. If it's somebody else, great. I just hope that they get the help. Um, and the truth of the matter is, when I see my sponsees or my guys at the houses, you know, the alumni now from our houses, when I see them having a major positive impact on other people, it means even way more to me than if I had done that. So I do it because I believe God, there's not a doubt in my mind. I know God wants me to do this. It's exactly what I want to do. I absolutely love it. So why wouldn't I do it? If there's somebody that is in a horrible way with addiction, I was at a place of complete hopelessness, did not want to live. I fully know the power of addiction. If the disease told me to kill myself, my family would be better off without me, and that's a lie. But I believed it. The problem with addiction, they tell us, it is a disease that is centered in the mind, and it just... The inability of the alcoholic addict when we're in that state, to really have rational thinking is very, is very challenging. But if you guys and girls are out there and you need help, I promise you there is a way out. I can't tell you how many, besides me, how many people in recovery I know that were suicidal, that wanted it to end, that thought they could not get well, that were at a place of complete hopelessness and despair. And so many of them are happy today. And I can tell you who else is happy. Every single one of us, our families, who we didn't make that horrible decision and kill ourselves. There is a way out. It's going to require some work. But I can tell you this. There are a ton of people out there that care. There are plenty of people, wherever you are, that want to help only because they want to help. You have nothing to lose. Somebody out there is going to hear this. And somebody's going to take that chance and reach out for help. And some of you that do that, someday going to be sitting with a person at the meeting who feels just like you did today. But because you put the work in and you no longer feel like that. You're going to remember. You're going to hear them. You're going to put your hand out. And you will be the only one that can save them that day. I tell my guys all the time, what we do matters. Give yourself a chance.